Hello everyone, I'm gonna get right into the reading. So I actually did a video about a week ago or so and I haven't posted it yet, but I'm gonna go ahead and post that now and I'm gonna post this reading with it at the same time. Um, just because there was a lot of really heavy information in that video that came through. And I know most of you are probably watching too, like in um, on behalf of your person because you wanna know what they're feeling, what they're thinking, what's going on with them. But I know some of you might actually be the one that's in that masculine energy that's, you know, been unwilling to do the shadow work and been in kind of like a stagnant area, confused, lost, uh, whatever else. So I figured I should probably do a reading with it as well for, for those of you that are, you know, on the other side of things. So let's see here. Let me light some Palo Santa really quick. Because I was getting, I mean, lately it's been a pretty consistent message the past week or so. Is like there's this group of masculines that have very, very bad karma. And I mean, it could be, you know, it could be a woman and feminine energy as well. But I think for the majority of you, this is probably more of a masculine energy. Um, or, or, you know, male, I guess I should say. Not necessarily masculine, but, you know. But uh, let's see. Let's get into it. Yeah, because I keep getting something about bad karma. I was doing a reading where I was basically saying, and karma is just, it's kind of rebalancing things out. And I was doing a reading where it was like, they thought that they could take the easy way out pretty much. Um, and they're starting to come to this realization. They're going to be forced to, it's like the mask is being ripped off. They're going to be forced to do the shadow work, whether they like it or not. Um, the more they try to hold on to their comfort zone, the more, because a lot of them are trying to escape right now. They're trying to distract themselves. They're blaming other people. They're not really taking accountability. They're just, you know, thinking all women are crazy and dramatic or all men are crazy and dramatic or whatever else. Like they're just, they're blaming individual people and not really taking a look in the mirror. They're trying to avoid accountability. They think they're going to be able to go find something easier and that's not the case. So a lot of these masculines are finally coming to, to this realization that they're, you know, a huge part of the problem here. They're being forced to take a look in the mirror. The mask is being ripped off. Um, you know, many of them, like I said, they're still trying to distract themselves, trying to blame others, trying to take the easy way out, but it's just not going to work. It's going to, the more they try to run, the more they try to distract themselves and, and run from doing the shadow work and facing themselves and working on themselves and becoming you know, the person they are deep down or the person that they want to be, the more they try to run from that, the more they try to run from, you know, their traumas and guilt over things they've done and whatever else, um, the harder their lives are going to get, you know, that was pretty much what I was picking up in that, that reading, you know, not to reiterate too much, but just, just trying to recap too, since I did that reading about a week ago. So I'm trying to remember what I posted on that as well. I just remember, you know, feeling like I needed to add some messages to that. But yeah, it's like one of those situations where it's like, if they have a toxic job and they're, you know, just, a, you know, in denial, trying to sweep it under the rug, trying to pretend like everything's fine because they don't want to deal with it. It's like, they're going to have like a fight with a coworker or a boss or get fired or something of that sort. Or like in relationships, they just want to blame certain people and they don't want to take responsibility for themselves. Um, they just want to, you know, kind of group all women or all men together, um, want to distract themselves. And it's like they're going to end up just being left alone. They're going to be end up, you know, basically being forced to be alone until they until they deal with themselves. But yeah, the mask is being ripped off. Um, and they're going to finally recognize that that. Um, you know, they're, that they're going to be pushed out of their comfort zone. They're going to be forced to make these big life changes with or without this other person in the picture with, with or without. Cause like I said, for many of, of them, it's like they blamed a specific person or multiple people, or they just, they, they didn't want to look in the mirror. So they just thought they'd go find something easier and it's going to backfire on them so badly. They're going to think they're having fun and distracting themselves and they're going to find themselves in a lot of drama with people. Um, lots of falling outs, lots of chaos. Um, you know, the divine isn't, you know, sorry for recapping. I'm just, I'm trying to remind myself too what I, what I did, what, I, what I, you know, went through in that, in that video, what, I, what came up with that video. 
but yeah, it's like they're not going to be able to distract themselves. There's there's no running. They might have that illusion of distracting themselves temporarily, and then they're going to find themselves in the midst of more drama. Like if they try to run off with like a third party, they think it's going to be easier. They think it's going to be fun. They just, you know, again, because it's like they don't want to take accountability. They want to blame other people. And they're going to end up finding themselves in a shitload of drama with, the, with that third party, um, maybe being abandoned by the third party. Or like I was giving the example with work, it's like they want to sweep things under the rug. They're not they're not going to be allowed to basically anymore. Their spirit guides have had enough. They're they're not doing things their way. They're not willing to negotiate. Their spirit guides are not willing to negotiate with them anymore was what I was getting. They don't have any patience left for them. Their, their spirit guides are basically coming through and they're doing things their way now. There's divine intervention. They're being forced to do things the hard way because they didn't want to do things the easy way. They just wanted to sweep things under the rug and they just wanted to, you know, stay complacent, stay in their comfort zone. So now that comfort zone is kind of violently being ripped away from them. But that's what they get. I mean, let's let's look into this, though. Let's let's see what can this person do, because for some, I feel like these masculines really feel lost. They're like, OK, like. Like, they're coming, I just feel like a lot of frustration. It's almost like they're still, I almost feel more frustration from them, like, the past couple days from this group of masculines. I'm almost channeling the energy of more frustration than I was, like, a week ago when I was doing, when I did that reading. It almost felt a little bit calmer. Now it actually feels like they're more, like, angry or frustrated. I don't know. We might do a separate reading on that and see what's going on with that because that energy just keeps coming through. Like, just, like, major frustration. I think because they're, like... I, th I think... How do I explain this energy? It's almost like they're pissed because they know this. Even if they haven't consciously found out that they're going to be forced to make these changes regardless of who is or isn't in their life. Like, it's, it, it's in general. It, it's, like, it doesn't... It's not just about one relationship that they might be in. It's it's in general, they're going to be forced to make these changes. I think they're coming to this awareness and I feel like they're feeling their spirit guides around them and I feel like they're fighting it. Like I feel like they're just really stressed out and they're kind of almost like arguing with the universe or arguing with their spirit guides right now. Like they're it's like they're almost like at war with their higher self. It's like their higher self, because I just, the past couple of days, it's like I keep feeling this frustration and it's almost like, like their higher self is trying to come through strong. Um, I feel like it's also partially because they have opportunities that they're about to miss. They're about to miss the boat if they don't make these changes. It could be love, it could be money, it could be multiple areas of their life, like multiple blessings that were meant to come in. And they're about to basically just start from scratch, like square one, do the whole karmic wheel, karmic cycle over again. It's almost like this person had the chance to like have money and abundance and true love and everything. And they kept messing it up for themselves. They kept sabotaging. They kept not considering anyone's feelings but their own, just very selfish energy. Um, and it's almost like they're about to have to start from square one because it's, it's, it's really sad, but it's almost like this person is like insisting on going down a karmic path and they're not, it's almost, how do I explain this energy that I'm seeing? It's almost like this person is not, I don't want to say delusional. That's not, that's not what I don't mean it like that. It's not, it's not delusion, but it's almost like this person doesn't, they're not using their intuition. They're not seeing what's going on below the surface. Because I just keep seeing, like, I get, like, a visual of, like, they have, like, true love and money and abundance. And, like, that's, like, behind the scenes, though. That's, like, like they have that opportunity. But, like, on the surface level, like, in the physical, they're seeing that as, like, the bad path or the scary path or the path that requires too much of them. And then they have a karmic path. You know, this could be, like, a karmic relationship, karmic friends, jobs, whatever, just staying stuck in the same cycles, not growing, not changing, just making excuses, being stubborn, being stuck in their ways, seeing things from their own limited perspective. Um, and, but like to them, that looks like 
it's like the roles are like reversed. Does that make sense? It's almost like to them, though, that karmic path looks like the right path. Like it looks like what would make them happiest on the surface level. It's almost like lust or like glamour kind of like it looks like oh, it, like to them, it like they're like they're kind of just dumb. I, not, not, I shouldn't say it like that because I know there's I'm sorry. I'm sorry because there probably are masculines on here that are like genuinely wanting to change. So I really apologize. Like if you're if you're one of those masculines that's like watching, you know, because I'm sure there are um, you know, some, some masculines that actually, we might, we might end up doing different readings on here too, because I'm actually getting almost like a split. Like there's going to be some masculines that actually do make the changes and they do get on the right path just in time. And there's going to be other ones that stay on the karmic path. Um, so I might end up doing like readings for both those sets of masculines, but, but anyway, you know, those of you, like those of you masculines, I hope you guys know, like if you're one of those masculines that genuinely like takes responsibility and you see the error of your ways and you want to better yourself, like when I, when I make off, you know, comments like that, I hope you know, I'm not like, I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about the masculines that are just, that are selfish, that do not consider other people. It's just all about them, all about their fears, their insecurities. They don't consider that other people might have the same fears, the same pain, the same insecurities. They just, they prioritize themselves over everything. So, you know, if, if I, t if I talk shit and you're not one of those masculines that likes that, that that's like that, then I hope you understand. I'm not, I'm not, you know, you're not part of that group. You might be part of the group that's, you know, here because you genuinely were like that. And now you're genuinely trying to make these changes. Like I was saying, I think there's going to be two different sets of masculines that I might start channeling because some of these masculines are actually going to make some changes in the, just in time and others are going to go down a karmic path. So that's why I always say when I do the, the readings too, like, don't take it if it doesn't resonate, you know, you'll, you'll know what your energy group is. There's going to be quite a few different energy groups that I channel on here. Um, but anyway, I want to, I want to get into the reading into, um, into, you know, the shadow work and, and what can be done here. Let's see. I just keep channeling this frustration. Like I said, I did that, the, the reading that's going along with this one, I did it like a couple, like a week or so ago. And I just keep channeling this energy of like the masculines are like really frustrated right now the past couple days. It's almost like I feel like some of them, for some, I almost feel like there was someone that triggered these changes in them. Like they brought up these emotions and they don't like that. They're pissed about that. But they're like almost like angry about it. Like they're blaming somebody else for their own emotions or for like they're they're blaming it's like how dare you make me love you or how dare you make me feel these things or how dare you how dare you like make me think about traumas I didn't want to think about or how dare you make me change and point out things that I didn't want to look at or you know things just just things like that where it's like they really you know they did this to themselves they they sabotage themselves again and again and again like they you know they refuse to listen to their intuition time and time again they suppress themselves they try to sweep things under the rug they, you know, ignored themselves, they ignored their soul, they didn't want to do the healing work that is on them. It is not, you know, the feminine's fault for for calling them out for seeing through them for pointing these things out. Um, and like I said, honestly, even if this even if this feminine wasn't in their lives, like somebody else, would, th this, this is, you know, like I was saying, it's, it, there's no running, there's no running at this point, there's no comfort zone left at this point, any comfort zone they think they have is just an illusion. Um, if they try to, you know, if they try to run from the shadow work, try to distract themselves, they're just going to end up in more drama with, with karmic connections, um, like, you know, the third parties that they want to distract themselves with. They're going to either, they're going to be, it's one of two things, or maybe like a combination of both. Either they're going to just be forced to be alone until they make these changes and they start doing right by people and taking accountability just in general in their lives and like really being honest and getting back in touch with their emotions. Um, looking at relationships, this person has such a toxic way of seeing relationships too. He, they, this person kind of, this for this group, it's almost like they just see relationships as some kind of game. They just, they're all about their ego. It's just, it's a very fragile ego and that ego is just being broken down in the worst ways right now. But again, you know, this built up and they did this to themselves. This was coming for a long time. Like they, they have the, the chance to do things the easy way. And now, you know, and it's, it's not even this feminine's fault. It's like their spirit guides are the ones, you know, coming through here and 
bringing about these life changes. Their, their spirit guides are the ones that are like, I, you know, I think in that reading I was getting that their spirit guides almost like there was some kind of divine intervention or some kind of like meeting in the astral realm or in the higher realms where they were like, okay, we've done things, you know, this person's way. We've tried to be patient. We've tried that. We've listened to their prayers. We've tried to do things the gentle way. It's not working. We're coming in and we're doing things our way. Now we're doing things the hard way. Mask is being ripped off, you know, no more comfort zone. They're, they're being forced to look in the mirror. And the more they fight it, the harder their lives are going to get. The more, because it's almost like this per person is like stagnant right now. Like things are just not like blessings are not coming in. Like things are just not going well for them. And again, they want to blame other people instead of like, you know, seeing that they got themselves to this point. Their their spirit guards are kind of blocking them until they, they're, they're forcing them to face themselves and be alone and do this work. So they're kind of being blocked from, from good things coming into their life until they do that. Um, and yeah, those that are going to try to distract themselves and keep running, it's just going to get worse. They're either going to, they're going to have drama with the karmics. They're going to have falling outs with like whoever they're trying to distract themselves with third parties, just lots of chaos. Like they're, they're gonna, it's, it's, it's inevitable, you know, it's inevitable that they're going to have to, um, to deal with themselves pretty much. It's almost like a person, like the kind of, the visual I get is almost like somebody who's like drowning, but like, you know, when someone's drowning and someone's like trying to help them or trying to save them and then they end up like trying to like, like kind of pulling that person down with them. It's almost like that energy where it's like, they're not, they're like in the water panicking so much that they don't realize if they just calm, calm down and like float, they would be good. They would be fine. They could, they could receive help. You know what I mean? Like they could go get counseling or they could go get some type of help, some type of support. Like, it's like they're fighting it so hard that it's like they're making themselves drown. You know what I mean? Like, if they just relaxed and they just kind of let go and trusted the universe and got on board with their spirit guides and, and um, you know, started taking accountability and healing themselves, um, even just taking, you know, little steps, like, you know, things would get easier for them, but it's the fact that they're fighting this and that they're still trying to distract themselves and sweep things under the rug that it's, that's making their lives so stagnant and so difficult. I mean, some of them do need counseling because some of them do have deep traumas that, you know, they might not want to face on their own and that's totally fine. But it's like, I feel like, you know, doors would open for them just by taking a responsibility if they were just like, you know what, I can't blame, I can't blame all my exes for this, or I can't blame um, my parents for this, or I can't, well, I mean, some of them might have toxic exes or toxic parents, and yeah, you, you, you know, you want to be logical and protect yourself. But it's one of those things, too, where it's like, they really need to, um, you know, like I was saying, just, just look in the mirror. Sorry, I know this reading is a little bit more scrambled. Um, my neighbors are arguing a lot and I'm picking up on that energy. And then I'm picking up on like this energy of all the masculines being so frustrated right now. And there's just lots of confusion. So it's kind of, I think it's coming out when I'm channeling, like I'm, it's getting kind of jumbled. So just bear with me, guys. <laughs> Most of my readings are, are a little bit more clear than this. But yeah, I do want to look into how they can do the shadow work. And like I said, the first step is just taking accountability. You know what I mean? Because it's it's like, it's almost like this person is unrealistic. Like they just see emotions as like a weakness or they see, it's like they're suppressing themselves. And I just see this person like fighting their spirit guides and fighting their higher self. Because it's like they're so stubborn and they're so against changing. It's like they're so convinced that like bad things will happen if they change or they're it's like they have all these control issues. Um, so, I mean, like I said, they're going to be broken down either way. It's just up to them. Do they want to go down? I mean, at this point, I feel like they've messed up for so long and sabotaged like in so many areas of their life, financially, love, just friendships, just multiple areas that it's, it's not going to be easy either way, but it could be easier than it's going to be. It's, it's almost like every single day that goes by that they fight it and they resist the change and they like fight their spirit guides, fight their higher self, fight, you know, other aspects of their personality that they want to suppress. The more they fight these things, the harder their lives are going to get. 
and the more stagnant their lives are going to get. And like I was saying, I also feel like they're about to miss out on blessings. Like they might have certain blessings like love, money, abundance, things that were meant to come in um, around this time, like this year, I feel if they had gone down a certain path. And I feel like I feel like that's partially why their spirit guides are pushing them so hard because it's kind of like their last chance. Like there's certain things they're going to miss out on. I'm hearing like a business opportunity, like there might be some kind of blessing where it's almost like this person's not even going to know this was an option because they're just not if they go down a karmic path, it's like they're not even going to ever know that they had that option of having that opportunity, basically. It's like they're about to miss out on so many things and it's like they're doing it to themselves. And even if they do have toxic exes or parents or whoever, it's like still up to them to stand up for themselves and cut those people out of their life. You know what I mean? It's almost like self-sabotage where it's like this person will like trust all the wrong people and assume that the right people are like out to get them kind of thing. You know what I mean? Like if somebody is toxic or abusive with them or uses them for money or for appearances, that feels normal to them. That feels like familiar to them. And so they go with that. It's like self-sabotage. But if somebody like really is genuine and has their best interest at heart, they won't trust that person. They'll be like, oh, there's, you know, they must have a hidden motive. There must be something wrong with this person or they'll take advantage of that person. Um, and do to them what was done, what other people did to them. It's almost like they might take their anger for the for the people that that screwed them over out on really genuinely good people that really just had their best interest at heart. But yeah, it's it's a messy energy. This person, it's almost like they need to reprogram their subconscious too. Like. Like maybe they need to like use subliminals or they need, because I keep getting counseling too. Like they need some type of, I'm seeing like a certain type of therapy that I don't know what it is. Maybe it's like, is it, what is it? Is it like cognitive um, behavioral therapy? I don't know why I'm hearing that because I don't, I'm not, I don't know if I know what that is. <laughs> I've heard of it, I think, but it, it's like there's some type of specific therapy that I think this person needs for their mind. It's like their mind is their own worst enemy. Like their mind, it's like they self-sabotage to no end. You know, and the only reason they're not self, they're, the only reason they're not sabotaging with this, this feminine anymore is because they don't have the option to anymore. She's already either done or she's very close to being done. She's already lost faith in them. She's already, um, to that point where it's like they would have to make a lot of effort and show, you know, he'd have to show her something solid he'd have to either apologize put his ego aside make an effort show her that that she's important to him for her to really open to this again she's not gonna she's not tolerating small talk or him coming in and out and whenever whenever he's bored and lonely anymore she's not doing that um she you know she might have been willing to be patient in the past but at this point he would have to make a lot of effort to to get her to open up again But I mean, I guess there might still be a chance there. I think, you know, for, for some, I, I do feel like for a lot, I, I would say that there is still that chance there because like I was saying, I do get like, it's like this frantic energy. It's like, you know, and again, I really appreciate you guys bearing with me because I know this inner, this reading is kind of chaotic, but it's just like the energy I'm channeling, like I'm feeling it. There's so much like anxiety and frustration that these masculines are going through. And I feel like it's because their higher selves are coming through so strongly. I feel like their higher selves and their spirit guides, their higher selves are kind of like, hey, dummy, like you're about to lose the love of your life. Hey, you're about to lose this business opportunity that you were trying to manifest for years. Hey, you're about to lose this, you know, these friends of yours or you're about to lose, you know, like it, it's like they're at war with their higher self. They're at war with their own soul, which doesn't make any sense. It's it's ridiculous. It's It's like... Their higher self, it's almost like they think their higher self is like out to get them or like going to hurt them. And it's like it doesn't make any sense because it's like their higher self wants, you know, them to be happy. They want what's best for them. They want good things in their life. They want abundance. It's like it's just such a weird energy because it's like this person actually like fights off abundance like they embrace the neg like they embrace bad things. They embrace negative people. They embrace toxicity. They embrace people that just use them and treat them like crap. But they like fight like 
like they're fighting their own abundance and I don't know if they're even realizing that they're fighting their own abundance because I feel like to them it's like they're associating that abundance and that you know true love happiness with you know change and responsibility and so they're thinking the karmic path is the easy way out little do they know once they go down that karmic path it's gonna get real dark it's gonna get pretty bad lots of drama chaos and they're going to be on that. It's just, it's going to, you know, like they, they don't, they don't realize it. It looks, it's almost like I see like a trail where it's like, it looks really beautiful at first. It looks super happy. And then it's like, there's like a drop down. Like they just, and once they're there, they're there, you know, they're going to be, they're going to, like I said, they try to take the easy way, way out. They're going to find themselves in the midst of, um, just m more chaos, more conflict with karmics, more just, they're going to find themselves stuck even further. So, so yeah, it's, it's like they're trapping themselves. It's like that image I was getting of like somebody drowning, but it's like, if they just, you know, calm down and listen to the people that are trying to help them, if they just float, like they'll be good. They're, they're the ones that are making themselves drown with this, you know, all the bullshit that's in their head. But um, yeah, I kept getting something about counseling. It's like they might need a certain type of counseling because it's like they really need to reprogram their subconscious. It's almost like, like I was saying, their mind is their own worst enemy. It's almost like this person is like, I don't know if they were like gaslit or brainwashed by somebody, but it's, it's like their perspective is so warped. Like their perspective is like, like I was saying, it's like they resonate with people that don't treat them well or people that just kind of use them and then they... It's like they sabotage themselves again and again, but not just with love, with money too. It's almost like this person will like take a leap of faith for somebody who's super toxic for them. Like if somebody was like abusive, they would they would open their heart probably and take a leap of faith with them. If somebody was like really genuine and loving with them, they would shut down and like assume the worst about that person and assume that that person was out to get them. Like it doesn't it doesn't make this person makes no sense. But yeah, I'm guessing there's probably childhood trauma, lots of deep wounding there and things that because like their subconscious, it's like their mind is just really out to get them. Um, like they're their own worst enemy kind of. And it, it's like, yeah, I just I feel like this person's higher self is like in their ear, like their spirit guides are around them hardcore right now. Cause I just get this energy of like this, these, like I get someone like alone in like their bedroom and like all their spirit guides are around them. Their higher self is there like trying to get through. And this person's almost like, like freaking out, like, like trying to like, almost like fetal position where this man is like, no, I'm not, do no, 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 no. I'm not doing it. I'm not making changes. I'm staying where I'm at. I'm, I'm good. I'm happy. Like just denial, denial, denial. Um, like just completely fighting it and it's, it's like they're gonna it's really sad too because I feel like they're gonna be begging for these opportunities back and, and if they wait too long they're not gonna get those opportunities back it's almost like they're so stubborn that they're not even listening to what their spirit guides are saying they're just automatically it's like change triggers this person so bad that they don't even like listen to their spirit guides when their spirit guides try to come through and like help them with certain things. You know what I mean? Like it, it's almost like the fear of change is just so strong that like when their spirit guides come through and try to say like, hey, you could make these changes or these changes or whatever. It, it, it's almost like they just immediately get defensive. Like they're not. I, it, it's so it's such a strange energy I'm picking up. But if they just calm down, it's it's almost like there's these traumas that come up with when they're more emotional. And like, I feel like with changes, it's like they're they're afraid that they can't make the changes, but they can. Honestly, they know deep down they could make these really powerful life changes. They just don't they just don't want to do the work. But um, what was I saying? But yeah, it's, it's almost like if they just stopped, they're, they're so defensive and they're so prideful and stubborn and they have such a, it's like their ego is so big, but their ego is, their ego is so fragile at the same time. And it's like their ego is being broken down. Their spirit guides are breaking that ego down. It's, you know, we were getting that energy. It's, it's like, it's not, it's not going to be, if they want to keep going down the hard path, it's going to get harder. It's not going to be easy for them if they want to, but they're doing it to themselves. It's almost like somebody who's like, it, it's like, they don't, they could go down an easier path if they wanted to, but they're, they're, 
they just it's, it's almost like they're confusing themselves they think the karmic path is the easier path when it's actually the harder path you know not to reiterate myself too much but there's just so much information that's coming through and it's it's like hard to i'm trying to i'm trying to sort through and i'm trying to process it but yeah if they listen to their spirit guides they would actually realize that their spirit guides are trying to like give them advice or help them with certain things they're so it's, it's almost because i just keep i just keep seeing this man that's almost like covering his ears and he's like freaking out because he's feeling it's like he's he's become aware of something he didn't want to be aware of. Like he maybe maybe became aware of. Like maybe someone pointed out something to him, or he like he got called out, or he's becoming aware of these patterns. Maybe it's just like his spirit guides too. Maybe he's having dreams about his old patterns, or he's like, just. It, it's like I was saying, like, he doesn't have the choice of going back to his comfort zone. He, you know, he might try and he might feel and there might be like that illusion of like, oh, I think everything's OK. And it's it's just going to get it's going to get more more stressful for him. The more he tries to do that, the more he tries to run. But if he just like calms down and like listen to his spirit guides, he'd realize that they're actually like trying to help him. They're actually trying to like bring in blessings and abundance and opportunities for him. And they're trying to help him do the shadow work, too. They're not, like, his spirit guides aren't trying to get him to, like, just completely do this alone. You know what I mean? Because, like, for some, their traumas are so deep that they really do need counseling. They do need, like, mental help. They do need someone that can help them unpack these things. You know what I mean? So that they can they can handle it. But, you know, the, their spirit guides want to see them be willing to change and believe in themselves and believe that they can make these changes, that's they're not expecting them to do you know several years worth of shadow work or like a lifetime worth of shadow work overnight they're not expecting them to just like wake up tomorrow and just be healed and be good you know healing no one's ever fully healed you know what i mean but but it's one of those things where their spirit guides want them to want to see them at least take that first step and be willing to change and be willing to accept accountability for their behavior and their actions and also just seeing emotions differently. It's it's so, it's almost like this person just suppressed such a huge part of themselves that, that it's, it's like, it's like they suppressed their emotion, the, their emotional side. They might've vowed to themselves that they were never going to be that person again, like never be romantic or emotional or never you know, kind of like a kill or be killed mentality. Like I'll leave people before they leave me. I'll use people before I let them use me. Like, like they see like relationships as some kind of game. It's like they, they see it as some kind of like they create a power struggle where there normally would not be a power struggle. Like they could have a peaceful, good relationship with somebody and they'll, they'll find a way to make it a power struggle. They'll find a way to like, like, they always have to one-up people. They have such a fragile ego. Like, they always have to make sure they're prepared. They're... <sighs> this energy. Yeah, let's see. And I think that's just, like, the issue. It's like they're suppressing such a huge side of themselves. And, like, what do they think is going to happen? They think they're going to be able to what suppress their emotional side forever they're just gonna what make it make a promise to themselves they're not gonna feel anything for anybody anymore they're not gonna they're not gonna um deal with themselves and like what they really think that's gonna work they're just gonna spend the rest of their lives like only you know having one dominant aspect you know certain dominant aspects of their personality and they're just gonna suppress like their whole other side like a whole other side of themselves no no you're not gonna do that um, your emotional side is going to come out. I get when people get heartbroken, sometimes they make vows to themselves. They're like, oh, I'm never going to love anybody again. I'm going to, um, or if they like get screwed over by friends or family, they're like, well, screw everybody. It's just, you know, me, myself and I, and I'm, I'm never going to open up to anyone again, but it's an illusion. It's like, you're gonna, you're gonna open, it's human nature. You're going to feel things again. You're going to open up to people again. It's, it's normal. This person really just sees emotions as like a weakness, um, and that's that's a big part of the issue here. It's almost like they've been at war with themselves for so long that it's like that war is just coming to like that final major battle where it's like their ego is being broken down. I honestly feel like their higher self is kind of pissed off too because their higher self is like they're higher like it's like their own soul is annoyed with them. <laughs> their own soul is like, you know, soul versus mind. It's it's 
It's a really interesting energy, but all these things are out of balance, heart, soul, mind, body. It's like they're all out of balance, which is why this person is suffering, you know, all this chaos, all this karma. It's, it's like, you know, they've, they've been out of balance with themselves. Um, it's like they just create battles where there doesn't need to be battles. They make things harder than it needs to be. You know what I mean? Like they sabotage themselves on such deep levels that it, it's like they create it's it's like they create issues that don't even need to be there in the first place. Um, I almost feel like this person's perception is distorted too. Like they're not able to see things clearly because of, of this, because of how it's like they get in their mind, they get lost in their mind and they overanalyze and they make assumptions. And half the time those assumptions are not even reality. They're just, it's like based on past experiences, you know, this person is really seeing from like the lens of their past um, very prideful too. It's like somebody that doesn't want to, again, it's like, they just see things as like a, like a game. It's like, oh, I, I lose. If I, if I open my heart again, I lose the game. If I, if I quit this job that I worked, so, you know, I, I spent years working, you know, for the position I'm in. If I quit, I, I lost the game. I have to tell people that, you know, I changed my mind and I want to pursue a different career now, or I want to pursue a, it's it's like one of those things where it's like they care so much about their image and that's part of their bad karma now is why their image is about to be destroyed pretty much is like they're gonna have like their reputation like I said if they keep trying to run and distract themselves with third-party comics their reputation in the community is going to be ruined because they're hiding behind their image they're hiding behind that ego and that their spirit guides are going to take that away from them so they're forced to to deal with themselves. So they're forced to get in alignment with their soul. Um, but but yeah, it's it's like like I was saying, it's like their spirit guides don't expect them to do this work overnight, and they don't expect them to do this work alone. Like they do need to have support from the right people, or at least from like a council. I mean, particularly the council. I think they do need. I keep seeing some kind of like specific and I'm not saying this person's like nuts or anything like that I'm not saying that you know a lot of people get counseling it's like a normal thing but I feel like there's some kind of specific counseling that they need like some kind of um like behavioral like it's, it's almost like they need to reprogram their mind because they sabotage so much they need to like they need to stop fighting themselves but yeah it's like this person suppressed their emotional side they suppressed you know, so many aspects of themselves. And now those parts of themselves are coming to the surface to demand to be heard, to be embraced. Um, and they don't like it. They're like, they're like, damn, all these emotions are coming up. But it's like, yeah, what do you expect? You can't suppress huge aspects of your personality for years. Um, and then just, you know, think that you're just going to be good. Like it's going to come up sooner or later. And if you suppress things like that for too long, it usually comes up in uglier ways. It comes up, it's like more intense when it does come out. So that's what this masculine is dealing with now. This is like years of, you know, suppressing their emotional side, their romantic side, um, sweeping things under the rug, not wanting to deal with things, not taking accountability or responsibility for themselves, seeing, you know, connections as like some kind of game, like trying to trying to be someone they're not, trying to like, you know, just all about their image. So it's it's like, yeah, this other side of their personality is is demanding to be embraced and demanding to be integrated into, you know, it, it's, it's, like, it's like it's coming back up. This, this side of themselves, this emotional side, they're trying to get it to go away and it's not going to go away. It's actually the more they try to suppress it, the louder it's going to get because this emotional side of themselves is so tired of being neglected. This emotional romantic side of themselves is so tired of being neglected it's their higher self is tired of being neglected. It's like this part of their personality is demanding to be heard, to be loved, to be embraced and integrated and understood. Um, and I think they're not fully getting that. They're thinking that they can just, it's, it's like they see their emotions as like an issue they need to suppress. Um, but it, it's almost like they're, it's like they're at war with themselves, but I'm almost seeing it's, it's almost like with suppressing their emotional side like the more they try to suppress it it's it's almost like the side of the personality is like angry like it's almost like its own how do I explain this it's almost like there's two major sides to their personality 
There's their image, who they want, who they pretend to be, who they think it's safer to be so that they don't get hurt. And then there's, you know, their emotional side, their, their more gentle, empathetic side, the side of themselves that they're afraid to embrace because they think that it's just going to lead to pain and heartbreak and humiliation and whatever. Um, and so they're out of balance with themselves. You know, you can't have one without the other. You need both logic and emotion. And this person has been trying to just run off logic, off detachment, and it's, it's not working anymore. And the more they try to, you know, like I said, this emotional side of themselves is is not being suppressed anymore. This emotional side of themselves is almost like its own being now. It's like coming up and it's like, no, I'm going to be heard. I'm going to be embraced. I'm a part of you. I'm not going away. You're going to have to deal with it now. And the more they try to fight it, the harder it's going to get because this emotional side is like almost like sad where it feels neglected. It's like the inner child almost too, where it's like it feels unloved. It feels like it's just been like a part of them that's just been suppressed for years where it hasn't had any attention. It hasn't been given room to grow. It's just like been like this whole other aspect, you know, all these other aspects of their personality that they've been trying to suppress. So it, it's like when they when they deny it, it's like now their emotional side is like, no, I'm not going away. And their, their emotional side is almost like angry where it's like their, their emotional side is like, no, you're going to feel these things like you're going to you're going to get on board with me like you're not going to. You know, it's like this other aspect, it's like two people in one being almost where it's almost like they've split. You know, between their their image and, you know who they really, you know, certain aspects of themselves that they don't want to show the world. Um, so yeah, it's almost like its own being now that's like coming through and it's, it's like, yeah, the more you fight me, the more, the harder I'm going to come through, the more it, it's like, no, I'm not going to be suppressed anymore. I demand to be heard. I demand to be integrated. I demand to become, you know, balanced with you basically. Like I'm not going away anymore. Like it built up for this person's emotional side where it's like, I feel like they neglected that side of themselves for so long where now their emotional side is like, no, screw you. Like I'm here, I'm staying, I'm not going anywhere, no matter how hard you fight me. But like what this person needs to realize though is if they just stop fighting it and they just let those emotions in and they balance themselves that they can be someone who's logical and emotional. They don't have to go from one extreme to the other. Like they can balance all these different aspects of their personality. And then they can actually be happy because it's like they're in union with themselves, you know, like they've been out of alignment. Their chakras too, I feel like are out of alignment. Like I see their chakra. Oh my God. I don't even know what's going on with this person's chakras. I got like the weirdest visual where it's like some of their, I don't even know what the fuck that is, but like I got like the weirdest visual where I see this person's chakras, like almost like a, some of them are lighting up. Some of them are dark. Some of them, like they're all over the place. Like their chakras are just, some of, some of their chakras are like highly engaged right now. And some of their chakras are just like dark and kind of like neglected. Like they're, they need like chakra clearing chakra and like they need, they need to work on their chakras. Um, they need to clear and empower their chakras and protect their chakras. Yeah, this person's so out of alignment. It's insane. Um, that's like that's like the main energy. I might even title it that, something along those lines, because it's like this person is so out of alignment. So out of alignment. It's just like, damn. <laughs> but... Um, but yeah, you know, like I said, I do have I do have sympathy for this person because it's like if they've if they've been suppressing things for years, that's not easy to just open the floodgates. But it's one of those things that's inevitable. They're gonna have to deal with it. So it's much it's gonna be much smarter for this person to start figuring out how they're going to do the healing and shadow work instead of trying to fight it. Because like I said, it's gonna get darker, it's gonna get harder for them, more stressful, more falling out, the harder they try to fight this. You know, like I was saying, they can't suppress this aspect of their personality anymore. The more they try to suppress, you know, this side of themselves, the louder that side of themselves is going to get. And again, their higher self is coming through. They, they got a lot of energy around them right now. They got a lot of energy. But if they open their eyes, if they open their mind up, if they if they stop for a minute, they're going to realize that they're make they're the ones making themselves drown. If they stop, they can actually float. If they surrender, if they open up to their spirit guides, if they, you know, do the healing, they can float. They'll be good. They're they're gonna come to this this really harsh epiphany that they are the ones that have been making themselves drown. It's not anybody else. It's them. They're doing it to themselves. 
even if there's toxic people around them, they still are the ones doing it to themselves if they're allowing that in their life. You know what I mean? Like it's still self-sabotage. You're still doing it. Even if you're, if you're allowing toxic people in your life that just like, you know, use you all the time, you're still doing it to yourself. I mean, I'm not saying like it's completely your fault. Like it is the other person's fault too, but it's like, they're still responsible for that because they're allowing that to stay in their life. You know, like if they have toxic parents or they have like toxic, like friends or whatever, or people that get in their head because they're impressionable, like people that like lie to them and, and feed on their doubts and their insecurities and negativity. Like it's still on them for allowing that in their life and not saying, Hey, like, you know, I don't, I don't have all the answers. I might feel lost right now, but I know that I don't want to be on this path anymore. I'm cutting you guys out. I'm cutting these toxic friends out that just want me to stay insecure. They want me to stay weak. They want me to stay, um, you know, they, they don't want me to make changes. They want to benefit from me not making these life changes. You know, the right people are going to want to see you grow and be happy. They're not going to want, like someone that's genuine is not going to want to see you like sabotaging yourself you know what I mean but yeah it's a really interesting energy um again sorry this reading was so hectic it's just channeling these masculines like damn like this is this is it's like chaotic like they're these masculines are going through some chaos right now but um and I do want to pull cards. I know this is mostly me channeling. When I when I talk like this, it's not it's not just me going on and on with my opinions. This is me channeling. So I do have um I mean I use the cards as a tool and sometimes the cards will tell me things that I wasn't aware of or it will, you know, give, you know, it it will go deeper into the energy, but in general I channel. So sometimes I know what the reading's going to be about before I post it cuz like I might have a dream about it. Or I might just start picking up like a certain energy, like I might start feeling a certain way. Um, like right now as I'm channeling, like I'm like panicky, like I'm feeling like anxiety, frustration. But, you know, as a psychic, I'm able to discern when it's my energy, usually not always, but a lot of the times I can discern when it's my energy and when it's somebody else's. And I know, like, especially since I've, I've been feeling this energy, the more I got into the reading, I know this is coming from the masculines. And also the visuals I'm getting too. So like, I hope you guys understand that when I talk like that, I'm not just giving advice. I'm not just, you know, I'm, I'm not just speaking from experience. I am channeling. I am getting the information directly from, you know, spirit, spirit guides, the universe, what have you. Um, like I am getting the psychic downloads, you know, seeing the visuals or feeling the feelings, um, or like being led to say certain things or being led to, uh, you, you know, like just kind of flowing with the energy. So I hope you guys understand even when I don't use cards, I'm still channeling. This is still a psychic reading. The cards are just an, an extra tool that helps. When I first went through my psychic awakening, I actually didn't even use cards for a while. I would just look at pictures and I would just, I would just know. I would just have the information and I would just put it out there. I would just be able to, you know, see it, feel it, um, like, I mean, like visualize it or I'd get, you know, I would just kind of know and I would just put it out there and I would let it flow. So, so anyway, not to get too, um, off topic there, but I just wanted to put that out. Um, I am still gonna, it just, just is heavy energy. It's just a heavy energy. I'll probably try to ground and clear my energy just a little bit before I do the next reading. Cause just, this is the energy I'm feeling from the mask one is just so anxious, so chaotic right now. It has been like that for a couple days or so. Um, but yeah, as I was saying, it's, it's like, and I keep getting jumbled and I feel like it's because they're jumbled because they're going from like, they're all over the place right now. These masculines are all over the place, which is why this reading is all over the place. Cause I'm tuning into their energy, but so, you know, bear with me guys. Um, I'm actually getting a vision and not saying that like these masculines are like stray dogs, like don't take it that way. It's just, you know, a metaphor, but it's almost, and I guess it kind of goes back to like, you know, what I was saying about like the drowning and all that, but it's almost like I get like this vision of like, like a stray dog on the street that's been like, you know, in survival mode and eating scraps off the street and eating rodents or whatever. And it's like, they get captured by somebody who's going to take them to a vet and like, 
get them into a better home, but they panic when they're captured because they're like, oh my God, like this is all I know. It's kind of like that's what these masculines are going through. They're like, well, I don't know, like I'm in this cage now, but I don't know where I'm being taken to. And it's like the divine has them in that cage where they're they're actually being taken to someplace really good. But, you know, they, they don't they don't realize it because the streets are all they've known. It's kind of like that's kind of like the example I get. But yeah, these masculines are panicking. Honestly, I would if, you, if if some of you guys are witches, I would honestly do some like some healing or just send them some healing or something. Um, don't make excuses for them. You know, don't because like I said, they did do this to themselves. They do. They're an adult. They're making the conscious choice to they make that conscious choice to hold on to fear and to sabotage or to get on a better path and start making the changes even if they have to take baby steps so like you know as chaotic as their energy might be right now you still have to they still have to take responsibility for themselves they they're still the one consciously choosing to hold on to to fear you know but but yeah they do need some they, they need some healing, but I feel like that healing would come in quickly with a new perspective. It's, it's like this person, I just keep seeing them like panic. Their spirit guides are around them. Their higher self is around them. Like there's all these like really good spirits around them, but they're not used to it. They're not, they're afraid to make the changes. So they're fighting it and they're panicking. And if they just open their eyes and stop being so damn stubborn, they would see that these spirit guides are saying, hey, we're going to help you with these changes. You're, you, I know you don't believe in yourself. I know you don't think you can make these changes, but you actually can. Um, you can get back into alignment with yourself. You can have a much better life than what you thought you could have. Um, you know, like we have blessings in store for you. It's like if they just open their eyes, they're, re they're going to realize it's not scary. It's actually a really beautiful, good thing. They actually have this opportunity right now that they should really take before that ship sails. Um, and not, not that their spirit guides are going to give up on them necessarily, but I almost feel like their spirit guides are going to, um, their spirit guides are trying harder than usual right now, I guess I should say. Their spirit guides are coming through stronger than they usually do for this person right now. I guess that's how I should put it. Um, yeah. But, but again, it, it's like like what I was saying about how they don't expect this person to make changes overnight, especially if they've been suppressing themselves for years. They just, they want to see this person get on board with them. They want to see this person start embracing their emotional side, start em embracing aspects of their personality that they suppressed, start taking accountability and responsibility for themselves, start be willing to be wrong. Like this person has such a huge ego that it's like, they're so afraid of like, if they're told they're wrong or if they get constructive con criticism, they, they like pull back out. They, they pull out, you know what I mean? Like they guard themselves again. This person needs to be willing to like grow and evolve and willing to say, sorry, willing to admit when they're wrong, willing to, they need to c come into balance but they're going to really be surprised that if they start embracing this emotional side of themselves, it's, it's going to be like a much gentler process, a much easier process for them. Um, like life can get a lot easier if they do that, if they if they come into union with themselves, if they balance all these different aspects of their personality out, you know, it, it's the our emotional side becomes out of control when we suppress it or, or or logical side either either side like if we suppress any aspect of our personality that's when it gets out of control because like i said after a period of time it, it starts getting louder and louder and it demands to be heard which is what happened with this person's emotional side same with traumas you suppress traumas you try to pretend like you're fine everything's good those traumas are going to come out and they're going to be a million times worse than they originally were because you suppress them for so long where they just kind of fester. They just kind of built up in your in you over time, you know. So, yeah, that's what this masculine is dealing with right now. You really need some healing. Um, but, yeah, if they start taking the baby steps, their life is going to get easier. Which I think making, you know, maybe seeing a counselor for one. Um, again, being willing to admit that they're wrong. being When they're wrong. Um, being willing to to develop their intuition. And again, even with developing your intuition, you have to be willing to be wrong sometimes because when you first start developing your intuition, you are going to get it wrong sometimes. You're still, especially if you have a very strong mind, it's like 
you know, you're, you're going to get it wrong sometimes, but that's trial and error. And after a period of time, you start learning how to use your intuition, intuition and being able to dif differentiate your intuition from your mind. So, um, so yeah, it's, it's like, you know, they have to be they're. It's almost like they're, they're saying to themselves, like, Oh, I can't be wrong. I can't be wrong. I can't ever be wrong again. And they're not realizing that that's part of life. Like if you, if they just get on that path, and they they start developing their intuition, yeah, they're going to be wrong sometimes. But that's not a bad thing. That's part of that learning process of, you know, they're going to be able to look back and see, okay, this is why I was wrong. This is it, it's like part of developing your intuition is going through that trial and error process. You know what I mean? Like, it's not like a smooth path. It's not, not that it has to be really hard, but I'm just saying that there's, you know, there, there's that balance that comes in. Um, but yeah, they, their spirit guides want to see them believe in themselves because this person doesn't believe that they can make these changes, but their spirit guides are telling me that yes, they actually can make these life changes um, they're just afraid or they're prideful, but they are capable of it. They are capable of being the person they want to be. They are capable of making the changes they want to be. They are capable of, um, taking responsibility for themselves, but so, so far they're fighting it and choosing not to do those things. That's why I keep saying like, if you send this person healing, do not make excuses for them though, because they're still, they're still making these conscious decisions, you know, to stay in the dark. So you, you need to understand that, you know? This person isn't as helpless as they might appear, I guess is what I'm saying. They're not, you know what I mean? Like they, they have, they're, they're more conscious in this decision-making process than, than people might realize, I guess I should say. But, but yeah, if they, if they do those things, if they start making those little changes, baby steps, going to a counselor, um, believing in themselves and just getting to that point where you're like, okay, I don't know how I'm going to change. And that's, that's part of letting the ego go or balancing the ego out. It's, it's not, you can't get rid of your ego, but your ego shouldn't, this person's ego is too out of control. Their ego needs to be more in balance with their soul. There's important alignment there between ego and soul and between heart and mind that needs to take place here. They're, they, all the aspects of themselves need to, need to be balanced out and need to be integrated you know, it's like all these different parts of themselves are at war with each other, which is why they're in all this chaos and anxiety. But yeah, once they balance out, you know, ego and soul and heart and mind and body and spirituality and all these things, like once they get into this alignment, this balance, things will go smoothly for them. And, you know, these blessings can come, start coming in. Um, and, you know, a counselor can help come into alignment if there's certain traumas that they don't want to deal with on their own that they feel like might be too much that's totally fine again you know like I was saying this their spirit guides aren't looking for them to make a drastic overnight like change I mean they can but they're not looking for that they're not expecting that much of them they're expecting baby steps they're expect they're wanting this person to just say hey I accept my emotional side I accept that I cannot fight my emotions anymore I accept that I'm a human and I have emotions and it's normal for me to have emotions I accept all these other aspects of my personality. Um, I'm, you know, going to look at my traumas and what I need to heal. I'm not going to sweep it under the rug anymore and pretend like they're not there. I'm going to actually be honest with myself about how I feel. I'm going to be honest with myself about these traumas that need to be addressed. Um, and again, willing to be, you know, they, they don't need to have it all figured out. That's fine if they don't have it all figured out. They can, you know, their spirit guides will be proud of them for just saying, hey, I you know, I'm scared, I'm confused, I don't know how I'm going to do this, but I, you know, I want to make those, I want to start making those changes. I, you know, just, just believing in themselves, just being like, you know, kind of their spirit guides are trying to tell them, hey, you can make these changes. You, it's actually the easier way out. The easier path is actually if you do make these changes, that's where your blessings are. Um, and they have that universal support to make those changes if they if they choose to go that the easier route, um, the route that's actually easier, but to them appears harder. But you know, yeah, um, this went on a lot longer than I thought it was going to. But yeah, just taking those little baby steps that a counselor can help them through or through or somebody, you know, they might need help with those traumas. 
and just you know saying like I'm willing to get it wrong sometime I know it's it's this is new to me this is unfamiliar territory so I might get it wrong sometime I might be a little bit confused I might um you know I don't have everything figured out but I'm going to take those steps um towards healing, towards being my true self, towards getting back into alignment. And yeah, it's like they they, you know, they might need that therapy to to do that. Yeah, because I am getting for some, it's like they have very deep childhood traumas that they do need professional help dealing with. Like they don't want to go through that on their own. Like it might not be a good idea for them to go on through that on their own. But um, but if they take the baby steps, their spirit guides will work with them on that so that it's not so that they can balance it out. You know what I mean? So that they can kind of start slowly letting this energy back in and, and you know, working through things. Okay, this is their advice. Surrender procrastination. Now is the time, just what we're talking about pretty much, just reiterating that is now is the time to jump on a goal instead of putting it off. Taking action now, taking action will attract success. Like they need to, they need to make that call to that counselor, to that mental health, per, mental health person. And I want to say too, some of them are just, their, their ego is so, they, they need to be, how do I explain this? They need to embrace their higher self, yes, but they also need to be aware that their mind is going to be their own worst enemy and try to sabotage them. So, like, if they call a counselor and the counselor is like, oh, I don't have any openings available or it's, like, not the right fit, they're going to be like, okay, see, that's, like, a message that I'm just doomed. No, don't do that shit. Don't do that shit. You are sabotaging yourself if you do that. You might need to try a few different counselors, there might be a few that are booked up or there might be ones that you just don't resonate with. That's part of life. That's normal. You still are being guided to find the right counselor. And it could be the first try for some, but for others, it might it might be a few different counselors before you get the right one. But for these masculines, they do need that help. They do need that subconscious reprogramming so that they're not just sabotaging themselves anymore. And they might even need some like spiritual, like, like chakra clearing and healing. Like they need just getting back in alignment with themselves. Surrender to effortlessness. Stop pushing so hard. The art of living means going with the flow instead of trying to force the river. Exactly. They don't want to go with the flow. They want, they're all about their ego, all about their image. If they go with the flow, it's like that person that's drowning. If they stop panicking and they stop assuming the worst about themselves, about others, if they if they balance themselves out, they're gonna float. They're gonna be good. They're gonna there's gonna be like a peaceful energy that actually comes into their life if they stop fighting themselves so much and stop fighting their spirit guides. Surrender to the wisdom of your body. Listen to your body's messages about a person or situation. If you feel physically drained or uncomfortable, be cautious. If you are energized and happy, move forward. So for some, they have like psychic vampire types in their life that they need to cut out, that they need to like be more mindful about what energies they're allowing in their, into their life that are just sabotaging. Surrender your ego. <laughs> Surrender your ego. Wow. <laughs> Cultivate gratitude, be of service to others and come from your heart. A big ego can work against you, but humility will further your goals. And I apologize, you guys. I know I repeated myself so many times in this reading. Like I... Like I said, like I said, like I'm saying again, like this, just the chaos I'm feeling from these masculines. I'm amazed I was even able to like get anything out here. It's just so, I don't know if I've ever picked up on like this much, like just anxiety and chaos and like conflict, like someone's so out of alignment with themselves. Like it's so, you know, it's... It's just a lot to channel. It's a lot that came through there, you know, but, um, yeah, I think some of them actually are going to take the baby steps though, because they're going to, they're going to get too frustrated. This energy I feel is too heavy. It's too, it's like, it's just it's such a strong anxiety and it's too frustrating. I almost feel like they're so damn stubborn and they have such a big ego, but it's like, they have a fragile ego too. And it's, it's almost, it's like, 
they're they're gonna exhaust themselves they're gonna get to that point even if this person's like a warrior type they're gonna get to that point where they don't have any fight left in them and it's really sad too because they were actually fighting good things they were actually fighting their their self <laughs> They were actually fighting blessings that wanted to come in. They were actually fighting, you know, positive changes and, you know, getting into alignment with themselves and and being, being emotional and logical and being just all aspects of their personality. Like those are the things that they were fighting. And at some point it's like, what a sad thing to fight. You know what I mean? It's like you, they wasted all, they're going to have regrets because they're going to look back and they're going to be like, damn, I wasted all that energy on like fighting who I am, like fighting things that would have been good for me, you know? But they're being worn out. They're wearing themselves out. They're wearing, again, they're doing this to themselves. Nobody's, nobody's doing this to them. They're doing this to themselves, even if they're blaming others for it. Yeah, they need to rest. Surrender to rest and sleep. This person needs to, this person might be having insomnia. To prevent burnout, slow down. Honor your need for quiet time and peaceful sleep. To rejuvenate your body, mind, your mind, body, and spirit. Surrender your belief in scarcity. The universe is asking you to open to the infinite nature of abundance. In this way, you can remove blocks in your life and succeed beyond your wildest dreams. Yeah, again, what, what I was, it's kind of just reiterating what we were talking about, but like it's, it's, damn this energy. <laughs> um, it's, it's almost like it's part of their self-sabotage where some of them tell themselves they can't do it, they can't make changes, or they tell themselves that bad things will happen to them if they make changes, or they're going to get hurt again if they make changes. And again, it's, it's just their mind working against them. They actually like, yeah, there's ups and downs in, in life, but it, it's, it's like it's much better. They're going to be much happier being in touch with their soul, being a, being a whole person, being their true self. You know what I mean? So they actually are capable of making these changes. Their, their spirit guides wouldn't push them to make these changes if they didn't feel like they were capable of making these changes. Like there's the spirit, there's so many spirits around them right now. These spirits would not be pushing them so damn hard if they didn't feel like they could do it. They're not going to, they're not going to do that to someone. They're not going to be like, oh, take a leap of faith and we're not going to catch you. You know what I mean? Like they're 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 guiding this person and again even baby steps i'm not saying this person should just dive right in because years of suppressed traumas that's a lot you need a counselor or you know some kind of you know therapist or somebody to help you unpack that and to to ease into it and to to integrate all these aspects of your personality again but but just being willing to be wrong being willing to let go of, of such a, a big ego being willing to be wrong once in a while which is part of life being willing to make changes, being willing to say sorry, being willing to see other perspectives, um, being willing to see relationships as, you know, mutually loving instead of just some kind of game that they need to win. Um, you know, again, they're just blocking themselves. They're, they're the ones doing this to themselves. But yeah, there's like abundance. There's really good things waiting for them, but they need to believe in that. They need to believe in themselves. You know, their spirit guides are trying to tell them, hey, you can make these changes. Hey, you can actually have good things, you know, happen in your life. You can have all the, you know, love, money, abundance, like all these healing, like you can have all this good energy. It's right here for you, but you have to accept it. You have to accept their help. You have to embrace that. You have to take action and, and take those baby steps towards making those changes um, and being honest and vulnerable and being, you know, and it's, it's, it's be honest. They're not even honest with themselves. It's not just other people. It's like they lie to themselves about who they are. They lie to themselves about their issues. It's, it's like, damn, like at least be honest with yourself, at least be vulnerable when you're home alone at the very least, you know, surrender to your soul's path. Your life's journey has been perfectly designed for your soul's growth embrace every lesson and every moment yeah exactly there's no scarcity there's no whatever horrible thing they think is going to happen if they change no it's it's not like again this is going to be an easier path if they make these changes and yeah they're going to be wrong there's going to it's not I'm not saying everything's going to be perfect but in the long run ultimately looking at the bigger picture they're going to be so much happier if they make they start taking the baby steps towards making these little changes 
And they might, that I keep, cause I keep getting the counselor and I think they also might need a, a counselor to keep them on track because, you know, as I was saying, it's like their subconscious needs to be reprogrammed because it's like they sabotage themselves. They have all these really deeply toxic ingrained beliefs that sabotage them. And so they're at war with themselves. That's part of that. Um, so they kind of need a counselor to keep them um, accountable because I feel like if this person tries to do it on their own, it's like they're going to take it's like someone's going to they're going to step out of their shell a little bit and make these changes. But as soon as somebody hurts their feelings or somebody says they're wrong about something or they're, you know, whatever, they're gonna be like, oh, see, like they're going to they're going to like sabotage themselves. They're going to be like, see, I should never have come out of my shell. People are horrible and blah, blah, blah. And I'm going back to my comfort zone. That's why they need a counselor to like keep them accountable. So the counselor can be like, OK, maybe there's another perspective like, yes, someone told you you're wrong. So what? Like, is your ego really that fucking big that, like, you can't deal with being wrong once in a while? Come on now. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, the, the counselor will help them um, embrace multiple perspectives is what I'm getting, basically. You know what I mean? Like, they'll help them stay on track and and stay accountable for themselves and, and keep going um, even when, you know, things aren't perfect. It's like they're, they're going to help them kind of ease out of their comfort zone. But again, that comfort zone is, is being ripped away from them either way. So they, you know, might as well make things easier on themselves with, you know, some professional help. Surrender to complete healing. Open fully to the loving, compassionate forces of the universe that support your physical and emotional and spiritual healing. Surrender denial, what we're talking about. Accept people in situations exactly as they are without denying the difficulties. Take the damn blindfold off. Then you can see things clearly and make the best decisions. This person needs to stop having tunnel vision. They need to start seeing things like multiple perspectives. They need to open their mind up. I'm also being guided to say like somebody needs to know that something that happened to their in their childhood, like um, like sexual or physical trauma or like a number of things, like they need to know it's not gonna it's it's. I'm not seeing it happen again. Like it's not, they're not doing any good by like blocking themselves from, um, that might be the thing that I feel like a counselor needs to help them unpack because it might just be way too much. Like they might need to slowly ease into certain things so that they don't just, it's not like super overwhelming, but I'm just being guided to say like, you're safe now. Like whatever that was, it's like, you're actually safe now. Like you're good. Your mind is making you feel like you're not safe, but you actually are like, you are in a, like, like thing, you know what I mean? Like there's, you're not protecting yourself by being at war with yourself. You're not helping yourself. You're not protecting yourself by being at war with yourself. You're actually hurting yourself by being at war with yourself. But yeah, someone's spirit guides wanted me to let them know like, Hey, like you're, you're good now. Like you're safe. Like you're, you're okay. Like, you know, you are supported. And that's the thing that always trips me out about, about like people with control issues, like really severe control issues that like doesn't make sense is like honestly, like intuition and tarot is the ultimate form of control. Honestly, like I could I could look into pretty much anybody. I mean, some people have like blocks up and I'm not saying that I would just like like dig into somebody that I didn't know very well or anything like that. Like there's there's, you know, your spirit guides want you to do the right thing. But I'm, I'm saying like like tarot readers, like psychics, it's like, we can channel things, we can look into things. And that's what, that's one of those things where it's like this person fighting their intuition makes no sense because it's like, they want control. They want to know everything. They want to have all the details and they could actually do that. If they got on their spiritual path and develop their intuition, they would actually be able to have all those details. Like that's what you know what I mean? Like they would be able to have that control to a degree, but in like a positive way where it's like they could tap in and use their intuition. But when you're not using your intuition, you have the least amount of control because you don't know what's going on around you spiritually. You could be, if you're not intuitive, you could be being psychically attacked and you won't even know. Like you'll just feel like, oh, like, you know, shit's going wrong or whatever. Like you won't, you, you spiritually, you need to develop your intuition so you know what's going on and again you might get it wrong sometimes especially at first but then as you it's like learning anything like when you learn to cook you're gonna your your first few meals are gonna be shit but once and you know after a long period of time of practicing trial and error eventually you're gonna start cooking really good meals it's the same with intuition it's like 
you're going to get the details wrong sometimes. You're going to, you know, you might might assume things that aren't true, especially if you have a, a mind that works against you like this. But, you know, eventually you're going to learn to use that intuition and you're going to be able to see things clearly and you're going to be able to know who's good for you and who's not good for you. And that's the ultimate form of control. You know, using your intuition is like the ultimate way to, to you know, the ultimate way to control things in a way. Um but fighting your intuition, it's like that's, yeah, leaving yourself in the dark and just confusing yourself. Like this person is not in alignment with their intuition. So they're not, they don't even know what's going on. They might like assume the worst or they, it's like they just, they need to see things clearly. They need to be open-minded enough to see multiple perspectives. And they need to recognize that they're safe now. And that their mind that's been at war with them and it hasn't been keeping them safe, but their spirit guides, their intuition is what does keep them safe. Surrender to miracles. Be open to miracles occurring in your life. Feel and know that these events are real. Let go of any, sorry, let go of any resistance and banish any doubt that miracles can happen. Surrender to receiving support and love. All the polar bears <laughs> and the dolphins. <laughs> Allow the love and support of others in rather than trying to handle everything yourself. Yeah, this person needs to let go of that stubbornness and really needs some help with this. They need some help with this healing. This can take the pressure off and sim simultaneously nurture you. Surrender, you need to always be right. More about that ego. Give others the gift of letting them be right. Be yielding, not rigid. This will help resolve conflict and improve your relationships. You know, again, it's like they almost feel like they're safe if they're always right. But it's like it's just causing unnecessary conflict. Like people, are, you're going to be wrong sometimes. You're going to mess up sometimes. It's human nature, you know. And again, with that counselor, it's like they need that counseling because they're, you know, with their mind working against them. It's like I feel like if anything challenges their ego, they go right back to square one where they just tense up and they fight everybody and they just get in their head. They're like, oh, people are toxic or people are out to get me. And it's like they're. They're, they're so in their head that they're not seeing things clearly, you know, someone could give them constructive criticism and they're going to, you know, just assume the worst. They're going to, they're going to make it out to be some kind of attack or something. You know what I mean? So it's like this person really needs to just kind of accept that being wrong once in a while is part of life. Being, you know, going through ups and downs and pain once in a while is part of life. There's no avoiding that. Surrender to joy. A key to positive change in your life is to let joy in and savor it. Indulge in random acts of smiling during both the hard and easy times. Keep surrendering to more joy. Surrender to setting limits. It is healthy to set boundaries in relationships. Practice expressing your needs and remember that no is a complete sentence. Surrender to what is. Flow with what is instead of fighting it. When you can't change a situation, compassionately accepting it exactly as it is will bring you peace surrender to now act on action now is the time to be still and not act simply breathe and focus on your own power let others come to you let's see yeah it's like this person needs to just be still it's like they're drowning themselves they need to be still it's like they need to not 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 act in like the sense of like not getting help but it's like they need to not act in the sense of like they need to not be at war with themselves they need to breathe and focus and open their mind up you know and like flow with what is it's like they can't they're trying to run from this but they can't change it you know what i mean they need to accept where they're at they need to accept that this emotional side of themselves these other aspects of their personality are not going away um, the sooner they stop being at war with themselves and, and get in alignment, the better it's going to be for them. Surrender to the magic of who you are. We all have magic in us, even in the mundane aspects of life. Remember that you are a magical being with a uniqueness and worth that comes just from being you. Cultivate inner peace on a daily basis in quiet meditative moments. Focus on the stillness within and enjoy this inner refuge. Others will feel your good vibes too and your life will flow more inner, flow more easily. Surrender outdated beliefs about yourself. This is an important one. Let go of limiting ideas about yourself that originate from the past. Now this is this is key. Let go of limiting ideas about yourself. I'm also feeling like about others too that originate from the past. Then you can own your power and soar in your life. Like they this person has outdated beliefs that they need to address. They need to that's part of changing is like 
being, hey, like, hey, I had this toxic perspective when I was going through this. It's okay for me to change that belief. It's okay for me to accept new information and view things differently. That's how people grow and evolve. This person is like, it's like a pride thing where it's like they don't want to be like, hey, maybe I was wrong when I made that promise to myself in the past that was kind of toxic or maybe I was wrong from that perspective. It's like this person needs to be open to other perspectives um, to like to be able to see multiple perspectives, to be able to have that empathy, you know, um, and to be willing to change their perspective too if like new information comes in. It's like a scientist, like scientists are constantly like changing their mind about things. There's nothing. This person's like afraid of changing their mind. And it's like they need to, their perspective is part of the issue here too, is because they're like, well, I'll only change if, if it's like this and this and this. And it's like, no, it's, it's going to, you're going to be wrong sometimes, but you're going to be wrong sometimes whether you're holding on to control issues in ego or not. It's not going to make a difference. You know what I mean? Like you're going to be wrong sometimes. You're going to be hurt sometimes. You're going to have arguments sometimes with or without your huge ego and defense mechanisms. It makes no difference. You're going to deal with those things either way. Um, there's no avoiding it. And so it's kind of like this person just needs to, uh, like they need to let go of this, like limiting ideas, limiting perspective. Um, yeah. Yeah, because once they're able to just like admit when they're wrong, it's like they they need to. That's that's the issue is is that their their perspective again is it's just like they're seeing a certain way. They're seeing like I can't deal with this. I can't deal with this. I can't deal with that. I can't like they they want to control how it's gonna be and it's not gonna work like that. You know what I mean? Um, but if they develop this new perspective, it's like they're gonna be able to heal and grow continuously instead of you know stepping out of their comfort zone and then it's like someone tells them they're wrong or someone gets in an argument and they're like, oh yeah, see, everyone's shit. Everyone's out to get me and they, they go back to square one. But with this counselor's help, they're going to be able to, to have like a like con consistent continued healing and changing that perspective so that when someone tells them they're wrong or when they're wrong about something, it's not so devastating. You know, it's more of like a learning experience or if someone, if, if there's like some kind of conflict, they, they, they have the tools to resolve that conflict or they have like the boundaries to like cut toxic people out of their life. You know what I mean? Like they're going to, with that, with that different perspective, they're going to be able to handle things a lot better. It's going to be more smooth for them. And again, developing your intuition, part of it is, is, you, you know, you're going to have like the ultimate control if you develop your intuition. But, you know, like I said, it's trial and error at first where it's like, you're going to, you're going to have to learn. If it's like any other skill, you're going to have to learn it. You're going to have to learn and, and, you know, psychics like too, it's like, we kind of, we dig deep to see what's going on. You know what I mean? Like we, we have to really put our, our own minds aside for the most part, um, and like be able to channel intuitively, but like psychics, especially when they're first starting out, like they do get it wrong sometimes, you know what I mean? Like they do, they, their mind still comes into play. And then over time they learn to to separate those different energies and, and be able to tell when they're actually channeling something and, you know, also wh where that information they're channeling is coming from. Like if it's coming, what, what kind of spirit it's coming from, if it's coming from a good place, is it coming from like a spirit guy that's, that's helping, or is it coming from a demon? Is it coming from, um, like, like, you know what I mean? Like there's all these different things, but like, again, when you're intuitive, you can sense that energy You have the ultimate control. Surrender to prayer. Give yourself over completely to, to prayer. When you pray from your heart and you you will be heard throughout the universe and answers and support will arrive. Again, getting on board with your spirit guides, talking to their spirit guides, um, recognizing their spirit guides, like getting on board with your higher self. Surrender your fear of change. The universe is reminding you that you are cared for always, whether you're afraid of change in your job, your health or relationship or aging. Repeat the affirmation, I have faith that all is well. Surrender that idea that you can fix somebody. It's time for relationship to shift. It doesn't work to try to fix somebody. Each person must be accountable for his or her own healing. That kind of goes back to what we were saying about like this person might also have some toxic people in their life where they like, they're sabotaging themselves by allowing 
people in their life that like only want to use them for money or they only want to um, like take advantage of them or they just, you know what I mean? Like they, they need to surrender those people that are blocking them. So in order to success, you are ready to experience abundance. Don't look back at previous roadblocks or difficulties. Leap in to an exciting new world of possibilities. And we have surrender negative thinking. You have control over your thoughts. When negative thoughts surface, say thanks for sharing and quickly refocus on positive affirmations. And at the bottom we have surrender worry. But yeah, and you know, you're going to think negative sometimes. It's part of being human, but it's like not... This person needs to like not go on these downward spirals where they feed that negativity and like they're so quick to believe the worst and they have a hard time believing in like something that's positive or good. You know what I mean? Like they're very quick to be like, it's almost like they look for confirmation about the worst. You know what I mean? Like if they, if some, they're, they're, they get in that like too good to be true kind of mentality where it's like they might just assume the worst about people and then they'll look for other people or situations to like confirm that bias which is like an it's kind of like delusional where it's like like let's say this person's been cheated on a lot this person might like go and tell other people like the worst about this you know someone they're dealing with and then that person's going to be like oh yeah it sounds like they might cheat on you but it, it's it's like they're 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 being biased they're only here you know what I mean like they're they're wording things a certain way so that their negative doubts and fears are confirmed by other people it, it's like they're sabotaging them. They, they have all these different ways they sabotage themselves. Um, so they need to kind of recognize this and kind of find a more balanced way of communicating and, and balance, more balanced approaches. But uh, anyway, this was a long reading. This is a heavy reading. I don't even know if anyone stayed for this whole thing, but I'm going to put this out there. So hopefully it helps somebody. Thank you guys for watching.